Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hangar Garage. Now this afternoon we got a couple things going on. Uh, first, building out the metal shop here, uh, I'm needing a way to cut some metal. And uh, most people either use a chop saw, use an angle grinder with a cutoff disc, um, cold saw, band saws, all kinds of things. But uh, the shop space I have is a little limited, so I wanted to go with a chop saw. It kind of gives you an all around. Um, cutting ability for different types of metals and I can store it away if I need to. So I went out big box store purchased the DeWalt uh, it's the D28715 and I believe this one was an upgrade from the 712 I think was the model number uh, I'm on, honestly not sure what's different could be just a new batch they were in so I'm gonna go ahead and open this once we do that we'll give her some uh, cuts see how she does all right, so first things first, we'll go ahead and open it up. Um, it's obviously a DeWalt, uh, <laughs> if you can't tell already. Um, that being said, you know, I expect the quality of the packaging to be good. Um, most DeWalt products are packaged really well. Uh, I've had extremely good luck with DeWalt. Some guys absolutely don't like it. Some guys love it. Uh, I'm kind of right down the middle of the road. I, um, I think they do charge a premium for their name, but I also think they they honestly make some quality tools so uh, I was pretty excited to go pick this up and uh, give it a shot so let's see yeah, everything's packed really nice really nice quality I was able to see this in the store um, which was you know a nice thing to be able to play with it kind of get an idea of what the uh, quality was like before I had a chance to buy it so right away um, it actually looks nicer than the one in the store so maybe maybe there was some changes oh okay there we go yeah so in the store I <clears throat> this was loose they, they had a piece of packing material in between uh, I thought maybe it, it was a little tighter it's not so um, it's no big deal you're cutting steel right so uh, you want to be accurate but you also want to uh, be safe so this is meant to come down and make sure that the guard is down uh, let me just get the extension cord here unwrapped nice cord is what i would expect with a dewalt product um, i don't know let's say one two three four five maybe six feet of cord um, plug in that's good so the uh the neat thing that i saw with this and uh let me actually, I'll get a little bit of closer view. All right, so this was one thing that I was really excited about. Um, it's got a quick change keyless blade change system. Now, I haven't bought a chop saw in a while. I'm in the market for one. I'm, I'm probably going to get the DeWalt, um, but I, I don't really know at this point um, a whole lot about the new ones. So. Uh, someone comment below if this is new, but there's this quick change um, feature, and we'll have to look to see how it works. But um, you unlock it, and then you should be able to pull it out, and you're able to change the blade. And it's it's probably because it's locked down right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, you unlock it somehow. Well, anyway. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But you're able to swap out blades. So, you know, if you're doing different types of cutting, that's a really, really handy feature. Um, the other thing that I really liked about this saw, uh, they had this uh, gate where you can set, <clears throat> excuse me, different, different turns. So it's just a quick release up here. They got it really snug down here, which is fine for packing. Um, so the markings are 0, 15, 30, and 45. Um, and basically what you do is you release this clamp back here, this plate swivels, and then this actuator right here matches whatever's up here. So if you have a piece of a bar, let me, let me just go get a piece of bar real quick, short little guy. Some tube steel here. If you have it up there, you can push it right there and this little gate closes down 
and then you're able to really clamp down on this piece super secure and you know that's good for two reasons you obviously know that this is going to create a lot of sparks um, it creates you know a hazard to anybody um, if a piece of metal were to come loose and fly out um, i've had in the past with a chop saw that didn't have a good gate like this and to me it's a safety concern and that's one of the reasons why i went with the dewalt um, you know you can buy these cheaper from harbor freight um, mixed reviews right they don't have enough power this uh, exact saw is a 14 inch chop saw and I wanna say, oh, it's a 15 amp. And I don't recall offhand what the, the Harbor Freight cheap one is, but it's not anywhere near 15 amps. Um, and people were saying that during different metal cutting that it was bogging down and it just wasn't good. So um, it's got a, key right here a chuck key it's really no more than an allen wrench and that's to change out this guide back here which is nice that it includes it's on a grommet so it won't be uh rattling i'm sorry for the noise <laughs> it's garbage day here in michigan so uh that's what you hear in the background um so that fits really nicely in there and there is a retaining clip and a washer that was in the bottom of the box. So gonna have to take a look and see what that's all about. Um, for right now, I'm gonna get this set up for a couple cuts and let's see how she does. All right, so we're back. Um, after reading the instructions, uh, to be honest with you, um, I think I'm missing one thing that they were supposed to give me, um, which isn't a big deal. So um, with this, um, the way it's set up right now, and this might be just a little difficult to see. Let me see. Actually, I'm going to move you a little bit closer here and try to see if I can't make this easier. All right, there we go. Sorry for the bobble here. So the way it sits now, um, there's a lock at the back. And I, I'm sure most of you have used a chop saw in the past, so this won't be too foreign to you. But there's a little pin right here. And that pin holds the machine, uh, the saw actually down, right? So uh, you just give this a little bit of pressure downward and then you just push that pin out of the way. Uh, there's a little knolled edge you can pull, which makes it a little easier, but, um, and that's how it opens. Um, the deflector guide back here, this is where the sparks are gonna go and then go down. Um, that's another thing you gotta be careful with a saw like this, or any saw really, but the debris that the saw is shooting um, on metal <laughs> can light things on fire. Um, we actually just had an incident uh, this morning, I heard on the news, uh, at a welding shop. Somebody had one of these next to a propane tank and it actually blew the shop apart. Um, so you really have to be cognizant of where you're using this. Um, there's four mounting screws that you can put it down into a location. Um, you just have to make sure that location's suitable, right? Um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm mostly gonna probably carry this out uh, probably on the driveway. When I cut these pieces for you guys, I'm gonna put this out on the driveway um, just for the simple fact. I, I got a lot of flammable stuff in here. It's just coming out of spring. Uh, I need to clean up the garage just a tad bit more before I would feel comfortable using this. Um, but that's adjustable, so you can put it to what you need to do. If you want it to go more down, you can do so. Um, it is nice, it shows two different mounting ways. You can actually put it to the a bench like this with uh, screws or bolts, or you can just attach it to two by fours to give it a little bit more um, area, I guess, uh, to be stable. This thing is really stable anyways. Um, it's, I mean, it's pretty heavy. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. So, um, just a little word about the uh, the gauge here. Um, I just use a speed square, put it up. There are the markings, they're super inaccurate, right? So if you're gonna be a little uh, more precise with what you're cutting, definitely I would suggest using a speed square or something else to get an exact uh, uh, miter. And I do that with all my chop saws if it's something important. If it's just rough cutting some lumber or some steel, it's not going to matter too much. But when you're welding two things together, that starts to become an issue if they're not close together. So um, with that, the other two things, I, was, uh, I wasn't sure how this worked at first, but 
there's a little pin on the other side. Let me get this swung around. And uh, it's, it works like a uh, cutoff wheel. Angle grinder, excuse me. Um, that little trigger, you push that in and, it, oops, don't cut your finger off. Um, as you spin the wheel, there's a little hole and it will engage. And then that way, you can then come back over here and you can unscrew this with your hand. Uh, really convenient. I mean, these get beat up, eaten up. Um, anyone used a angle grinder with a cutoff wheel know that these get really chipped up. So that being able to be untightened and unscrewed by hand and really quickly, um, all it does is this comes out, you take off this backing plate, take the wheel off, put the new wheel on, put the backing plate, and tighten it up and you're good to go. Um, the only other thing to mention really on this, there is no active safety, uh, which I found surprising. I don't know if that's a, a cutoff uh, saw uh, industry-wide thing or if that's actually just DeWalt, I, I don't know. But they do provide, if you have children uh, that you're worried about using it, you know, you obviously always want to store it in a down position so that, you know, they don't particularly know how to get it open. Uh, even if they were to pull the trigger, it would just spin inside of its housing and it would limit the potential. Uh, it wouldn't stop it. So uh, if you have little ones, definitely be careful with that. But there's a, um, a hole that goes through the trigger and I found it interesting. It's for a padlock. Um, so that would be a good way. You could wrap the padlock right inside here and then you know you could have it put away in your tool chest where they couldn't find it. So uh, we don't have any kids, so I'm not gonna be doing that, but I think if, uh, if we end up having some kids, that's gonna be a really handy uh, piece there to be just sure that the kids don't mess around with it. This is a very dangerous saw, like any saw, uh, and you can definitely do some damage. Um, looking through the instructions just really quickly, there are some maximums uh, that it's able to cut. At 90 degrees uh, round um, stock, is five inches square stock is 4.7 um, some rectangle stocks four and a half by six and a half or three by nine and angle iron is five to six inches um, so those are 90 degree cuts um, so I, you know there are some limitations but that's with any saw this is 14 inch saw it's it's a good size so uh, I'm gonna get this down and we're gonna start cutting some uh, steel for a project I'm doing. That'll be my next video, actually. Uh, I'm making a uh, wood rack for next to our fire pit outside. So we'll get this set up and we'll see you in a few. All right, so we're down here at the saw. Um, just a couple words of advice. Obviously follow the instructions um, that come with the saw. Um, always wear safety glasses, especially with this, sh shooting small uh, shrapnel bits. You know, you can really do some damage to your eyes. So safety glasses are a must. I always wear shop uh, gloves. Some people don't like wearing gloves with saws. Um, I understand you can get caught in it and it can pull your hand in. Uh, I'm pretty careful when I'm around these. So I always wear saws and I just strap them up tight. Um, and a respirator. Uh, I've talked about it before. I'm in an industry that really I got to keep healthy for the longevity of my career. So uh, I'm gonna be wearing a respirator. This is gonna be making um, dust, if you will, of steel. And you don't want that ingested. So uh, just a couple things. I have a soapstone. I have a, uh, a punch, a little more accurate cuts. Just scrape the metal and that will give us a thinner cut than soapstone. But other than that, we'll get cutting. Um, I've at the end there, you can see I've propped up the uh, material at one end um, just so that the piece is level. And just notice it's going to require about another. another. That's perfect. That's flat right now. So we'll go ahead and cut. I'm going to cut a bunch of steel right now. And then uh, once we're done, I'll kind of give you my review, what I think, um, any recommendations that I think uh, need to be made. But otherwise, let's cut some steel.
All right, so one last thing. Uh, I just wanted to point this out. And I told you I had uh, had an extra washer and a retaining clip, both of which are right here. Those are at the bottom of the box. Um, I don't know why. I, I kept looking. I, I was kind of worried about using the saw at first because I was like, well, where could this possibly be? And then I found out. I don't know if any of you noticed. I was fiddling with the... Um, uh, the clamp that comes provided, really nice, really awesome to work with. Um, but as you can see, <clears throat> if I move this, it slides up and down this track. And you can see this right here kind of has this pin that goes in the bottom. Well, I found out where this, these two go. And it says nothing about installing it. So it looks like either they forgot to put it on or gave you the option to put it on. I, I don't really know. Um, it wasn't bad without it, to be honest with you. Um, I could easily get away without having it on. Um, and I do not have a pair of pliers for a retaining clip. As you can see, the two pinholes that you actually put a spreader and you open it up. And then that fits over this little cam here. Um, so this goes on first and then this goes on after. So I just wanted to point that out in case any of you buy the saw and were wondering uh, uh, if yours comes the same way. So, all right, so my overall impressions, uh, great saw. Um, uh, the blade, um, it's held up pretty nice. I mean, I made, uh, what was that, eight, I don't know, 15 or so cuts, um, not a problem. Had plenty of power to get through. I didn't mention, that's 10 gauge um, uh, box, uh, square tube. Um, it's a little thicker than most, but not as thick as you could go. Um, I was gonna try some other thicker material, but I really don't have a project for that. Uh, I just using on that, <coughs> excuse me, plenty of power. Uh, I was really impressed with that. That was the big thing I was worried about going any cheaper than this. Um, Pick this up, I think. Retail was 200. Um, it was on sale, and then I had a coupon uh, that I got off of eBay for uh, Lowe's, yeah, big box store, um, and that got me another I don't know $40 off. So I didn't pay much more than the cheap ones, uh, and I think I got a much better product. Um, going to be using this quite a bit in the shop. Uh, once again, I appreciate you coming, hanging out with me in the shop. Um, if you like what I'm doing, please like, please subscribe. If you hit the bell icon, you'll get a notification for any time I put out a new video. Um, please give me some feedback. Uh, how's the video quality? I know it's not that great of lighting in here. I do apologize for that. Um, I need to get another light uh, when I'm doing these other un unboxing or anything uh, project-wise on the table. It's a little dark. so. Um, but any comments, audio, anything, um, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, uh, come back and watch. Uh, there's going to be quite a few videos. The steel I just cut is going to be for a little bit, uh, uh, like I mentioned, it was going to be a um, log holder for my fire pit outside. So. Uh, we'll get that all buttoned up with the welder, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining the Hangar Garage.